you know, it's so sad to see what is happening, not only around the world uh, today, but what is happening in people's lives. You know, you speak with one person and they tell you all about their depression. You speak with another person, you, they tell you all about how they're struggling in life to put food on their table. They're struggling with this, that or the other. You speak with the other person and they're lost. They're still trying to find themselves. They're 40 years old. They're still trying to find themselves. You speak with another person. They're dealing with uh, health issues and sickness and they're on multiple medications and other person's struggling with anxiety and so on and so forth. And it's sad to see what is happening around the world. It's not just, it's sad what is happening in each individual's life. It's sad to see what is happening between nation and nation. You know, the one nation is rising up against another nation and you're seeing wars, you're hearing raw wars and you're hearing rumors of wars as well. And what is basically happening in in this world is sad. Why are these things happening in this world? People say, well, if God was real, this would, these things wouldn't be happening. If God was real, God would not allow these things to happen. No, 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 no. Don't try to throw your blame on God. You see, God gave you free will. What you see in the world is not God's work. What you see in the, will, in the world is the consequences of man's actions. You see, if I go out and take an action... I'm going to suffer the consequences of those actions if my action was a bad action. If I go to murder someone, I will have to suffer the consequences of those actions. I will have to suffer those consequences in my mind, when it replays in my mind, in my emotions with fear, anxiety, worry, or shame, regret, guilt, bitterness, whatever it is. I will have to suffer the consequences. And the way my life will play out will be the consequences of the action that I took. Now, if I go out and I take a good action, a godly action, I will live, I will experience the consequences of those actions. If I go out and um, I start a, a ministry and I'm doing the work of God and I'm feeding the poor and I'm doing the things that you know God tells you to do, I will live the consequences of those actions in my mind. I will have a peaceful mind in my emotions. I will feel love and compassion and kindness and gentleness and peace and so on and so forth. Because what you do for others, God will do for you. What you sow, you will reap. But it's not just that. I will also see the consequences of my actions in my life. You see, what you plant, what you sow, you reap. What you put out comes back to you. And so the consequences, not just in my mind, but in my emotions, but in the way my life plays out, the consequences are based on my actions and so what we see in the world is not the work of God it is the consequences of people's actions each person individually but then also uh, the, uh, um, the, the consequences of the actions that our entire nations take as a whole but it is the people individually that make up that nation and so what you see in a nation, in a country, in an area, in a neighborhood, is the consequences of the actions of the people that live in that neighborhood, that live in that area, that live in that nation, that country. And so what we are seeing in the world is the consequences of our actions. It's, got, it's, it's, not, it's not God... Uh, uh, causing these wars it's not god um killing these people it's not god uh, uh, uh causing uh, breaking and entering robbery uh, drugs did god tell you to go out and do drugs did god tell you to go out and get drunk did god tell you to go and rob that house did god tell you to murder that person did god tell you to be unfaithful to your spouse did god tell you to bring up your children that way so that they be rebellious god did the, don't blame god for your actions don't blame God for what is happening in a nation when the children, when the people of that nation are rebelling against God. The Bible tells us rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. When you start to rebel against God, in other words, doing the things that God told you not to do or not doing the things that God told you to do, it's like bringing witchcraft upon your life, upon your family, upon your neighborhood, because it's each person individual. If each house in that neighborhood is rebelling against God, then obviously that entire neighborhood will be like a neighborhood that has witchcraft on it. Now, if we expand it even further, further and each neighborhood is rebelling against God, 
then that entire city will be the, the equivalent of witchcraft being on that city. Now, if we expand it even further to the entire nation, the entire country rebelling against God, then it will be the equivalent of that country being under witchcraft. Now, if we expand it even further to multiple countries rebelling against God, then it is the equivalent of the world being under witchcraft. So what you see happening in the world is not the work of God. For God told you exactly how to live your life. What you're seeing in the world is the equivalent of witchcraft. Why? Because nations are rebelling against God. We need to start praying for godly world leaders. Instead of complaining and pointing your finger that nation is to blame. That nation is to blame. That country is to blame. Stop pointing your finger and stop, stop praying for these countries that God sends them godly leaders. Pray for godly world leaders. Pray for a, 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 a godly leader for your country. Pray for a godly leader in Ukraine, in Russia, in America, in England, in France, in Australia. Pray for godly leaders. Stop blaming each other. Stop fighting against one another pray for godly world leaders but it's not just that pray for godly religious leaders not every religious leader out there is of god i'm not just talking about other religions which i'm speaking even about christians just because they they're outwardly a religious leader does not mean they're really leading people down the right path to god Pray for godly religious leaders, not just in your nation, in all nations. Pray for the religious leaders who are in place now to lead, stop leading people astray and start leading people down the right path to God. Stop attacking each other, each other's ministries. I've seen ministries come up and attack ministries. I can promise you, Satan does not attack himself. Because the Bible says a house, a, uh, how does it go? A house divided cannot stand. So when we start attacking each other's ministries, I can promise you it's not the Holy Spirit attacking the ministry. Stop attacking each other's ministries. Pray for ministries. If a ministry is doing something wrong, pray for them. Stop commenting. Oh, that's not of God. That's not biblical. Your leader, stop, stop, stop this nonsense. Pray for that person. Pray for that ministry. Father, open their spiritual eyes. Help them be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then stop pointing the finger everywhere. If, you, if you're going to point the finger, point the finger here. Stop hating on your neighbor. Oh, that house down the road is doing that. Or oh, that person is doing that. You know, you start to rebel. Rebel against God. God says, you know, don't, don't criticize. Don't blame. Don't be bitter. Don't lie. Don't hate. Don't steal. Don't lie. Don't be prideful. Don't, 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 don't. So when you're doing these things anyway, that's called rebellion. The Bible says rebellion is as the witch of, sin of witchcraft. But it's not just the things God told you don't do. It's also the things God told you to do, which you are not doing. God says, love your neighbor. God says, treat others how you want to be treated. God says, when someone is hungry, feed them. When someone is thirsty, uh, uh, give them drink. When someone is uh, uh, homeless, shelter them. When some uh, clothe the, uh, the poor. Pray for your enemy. Do good to those who hurt you. So when you're not doing these things, you're still rebelling against God. So it's not just what you what you do, it's also what you do not do, which is rebelling against God. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So if each person took care of their own selves, their own home, then when that expands, then it will be an entire neighborhood taking care of their their home making sure it's godly 
So then that neighborhood becomes a godly neighborhood. Then it expands even further to the whole city. So then that city becomes a godly city. And then it expands further to the nation. And then that nation becomes a godly nation. And then it expands further to the rest of the world. Start praying. Start reading your Holy Bible. Start spending time with God. Make everything Christ-centered. Be spirit-led. Be led by the Holy Spirit of God so God can lead you. Stop leaning on your own understanding so God can lead you. God will lead you to the right people to pray for. There are people who need prayers right now who do not know how to pray for themselves or who won't pray for themselves. And I know that for me, when I used to be rebellious against God and so on and so forth, I didn't know how to pray for myself. I had people praying for me. And look where I am today. I mean, back then when I was homeless, I was addicted to drugs. I was, you know, negative mind chatter and so on and so forth. Very rebellious. I was in crime and so on and so forth. Had people praying for me. But look where I am today. I'm walking not in the ways of this world, not in the flesh, but in spirit, in the ways of God, advancing the kingdom of God. You see, just God. But I had people praying for me. There are some people out there who maybe they don't know how to pray for themselves. Maybe they don't believe for, for whatever reason. And if you could just align with God, stop making it about you and make it about God's kingdom. Make it about God. You think, yeah, but I want freedom. That is freedom. That is what will bring freedom to you and to the whole world and to your family and to your neighborhood and so on and so forth. Align yourself with God so God, God can tell you, God can show you which path to take, who to pray for, what to say, what to do. God will lead you all of the way. God will lead you. There are so many people now praying, um, uh, uh, for example, so many people are, are, are praying for uh, Ukraine. Everywhere you look on the internet, it's pray for Ukraine, pray for Ukraine, because they're currently being attacked by uh, Russia. Pray for Ukraine, pray, pray, pray for Ukraine. Uh, what about pray for Russia as well? What about... What about pray for God's will to be done? As opposed to pray for Russia, pray for pray for Ukraine, pray for Ukraine, pray for Ukraine. How about pray, praying for God's will to be done? God's will to be done. Because if one country is bombarding another, then obviously there's already a rebellion, there's already a witchcraft, there's, a, there's already ungodliness in that country. Why would you not pray for that country too? Why not pray for both? Why not pray for unity? Why, why just pray for Ukraine? Because that's where the war is. That's where the physical war is. But for this to be happening here, that means there's a spiritual war here too, which we're not seeing with the physical eyes. And until that spiritual war is won, there will always be physical wars. Pray for God's will to be done. Start to change yourself first. Change yourself, your, your children, your family. And then go and help your brethren, your neighbor. Because just as you've helped your neighbor, your neighbor will then help the, their neighbor. And as they help their neighbor, you can help the other neighbor over here. And then they will help their neighbor. And as they're helping their neighbors, you can go and help someone over here and allow it to grow and grow and grow. But it's not you. It's not by your power, nor by your might. It is by the power of the Holy Spirit working in you. This is why you need the Holy Spirit in you. Because then you might think you're doing good deeds, but there will be empty deeds. Christ needs to be centered. It needs to be spirit led. It has to be spirit-led. It must be Christ-centered. God will send you to the right person, the right path, the right location, the right prayer, the right word, the right everything for God's will to be done. Let's start doing the will of God and let's stop doing the will of Satan, which is pointing fingers and blaming and this and that and hating on that country and hating on this person. And Stop. Stop doing the work of the devil. Stop doing the work of the devil.
you have to get in your Bible. You have to get in your Bible. You say, yeah, well, I can't come up against a war, physical war. I can't come up against that neighborhood there that's full of murder and crime and drugs and prostitution or whatever it is. You're not going to because you can't. But the Bible says with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. You see, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, who Christ who Christ through Christ who is living in you. You see, the Bible, this is why you need to know the Bible. The Bible teaches you warfare, not physical war. Go out and fight or with guns or physical war. It teaches you spiritual warfare. You see, whatever is happening in the physical world, it is because... It is already happening in the spiritual realm. And if we, which means the spiritual realm is where everything begins. If something is happening here in the spiritual, that's when it begins to manifest in the physical. What we see here, the physical world. If you try to fight a spiritual problem from the physical realm, you, you will always lose. If you try to fix a spiritual problem from the physical realm, you will always lose. You will just create more fighting, more war, more hate, more, more, more. You have to go to the spiritual and win spiritual warfare in the spiritual before any change can happen in the, can happen in the physical. Once you win the warfare here in the spiritual, things will automatically manifest the same in the spiritual remember everything happens in the spiritual before it happens in the physical it's like you walk into your bathroom and you see spilled waters on the floor on the tiles so you grab your mop and you mop it up and you come back five minutes later and the tiles are full of water again so you grab your mop and you mop it up and you keep doing that you keep grabbing your mop and mopping it up well this is what it's like trying to fight a spiritual battle on the physical realm you will just keep mopping up what you see what you need to do is go behind the scenes into the spiritual realm. What you need to go is go behind the wall in the bathroom where the pipes are. So you can actually see where that water is actually leaking from. And once you fix that problem that is behind the scenes, it will stop leaking on your tiles. Once you fix the problem in the spiritual realm, it will stop manifesting in the physical realm. But because people don't know the Bible, so they do not know God. The people don't get into prayer, so they do not know God. Say that, so say that they don't accept Jesus Christ, so they do not have the Holy Spirit. So their life is not Jesus centered. So their life is not spirit led. They do not know the the Word of God. They don't know how to fight spiritual battles. So what they're doing, they spend their whole life just fighting on the physical realm. Whether you're fighting wars, whether you're fighting financial poverty, whether you're fighting sickness, whether you're fighting your neighbor, whether you're fighting racism, whatever it is, you spend your whole life fighting in the physical realm because you do not want to get to know god who will teach you spiritual warfare so you can fight that battle in the spiritual realm defeat it in the spiritual realm so it can manifest for you in the spiritual in the physical realm as god's heaven you see what god wants he wants vessels people people who are willing to deny themselves Die to the flesh. So it's no longer about them. They are willing to surrender themselves to God. So they can be an open vessel. An open vessel for God's Holy Spirit to flow through them. And work through them. So these people can start doing the work of God. Here on planet earth. Fighting these spiritual warfare battles. Winning wars there. So it can manifest as peace here on earth god is looking for these vessels for the holy spirit to flow through them so they can do the work of god so that they can so that they can start to manifest god's heaven through them here on planet earth but people don't want to do that because the devil deceives you thinking yeah but i want my freedom this is freedom yeah, but I want my freedom. If I follow God, then that's all my freedom. I have to walk in the ways of God. Walking in the ways of God is your freedom. Walking in the ways of God is what will break the chains of you. Chains of poverty, chains of addiction, chains of uh, crime, chains of sexual immorality, chains of hate, chains of uh, pride, chains of chains of 
whatever you see in the world. The whole world is in chains and yet they are deceived into thinking they are living freedom. I'm living a life the way I want to live. You, That's the life you want to live. If God could say to you, you live the life you want to be, I promise you it would look completely different to what you're living. So you're not living freedom. You're living a lie. You're living in chains. Your freedom is here. Because what you're living in this physical realm is just a manifestation of what is happening in the spiritual realm. And if you think you're going to deal with that by battling here on the physical, you've got another thing coming. You need to get into the word of God. You need to start living in the ways of God. You need to start spending time with God and building a strong relationship with God. Start conversing, communicating with God. You need to accept Jesus Christ into your heart so you can receive the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit will lead you to the right path, the right place, the right time, the right everything. So that you can start breaking those spiritual chains that have the world bound. That is freedom. The Holy Bible is a book to break you out of Satan's dark prison. It's a spiritual book to break you out of Satan's chains. It's a book to get you to freedom, not the other way around. That's the lie of the devil. I've got a lot about spiritual warfare in my book and more books are coming so you can purchase that below donations can be made below using the link below if my ministry is blessing you then bless it back and uh, for those of you who need uh, prayers or deliverance of course it's all free of charge there's no charge for that jesus says freely you have received freely give so donations uh yeah donations can be made below and if you need uh, prayers or deliverance email us and it's all free of charge until next time god bless you and the peace of jesus be with you